That's better than the one that gets knocked out. Oh, that's Kong. He's king around here. What's up, guys? I just got back from watching Kong Skull Island. This movie is all about some scientists that basically find a mysterious island that's hidden from all these crazy tropical storms and they think there are some giant ass monsters living on this island. So basically they go there with some military forces and what do they find? A giant monkey. That's my really crappy explanation of Kong Skull Island. This movie has so many Marvel Cinematic Universe characters it was unbelievable. We had Nick Fury, we had Captain Marvel, we had Loki. There was just so many Marvel Easter eggs in this movie just by the characters themselves. Samuel L. Jackson, Brie Larson, and Tom Hiddleston. Now the best thing about this movie is going to be the visuals. Now King Kong looks so real, he just looks like he's really in the room. When, you, when I was in the theater, I felt like King Kong was right there. Like it was ridiculous. I could see all of the hairs, all of the little designs on his hand. It was remarkable. It looked visual amazing when King Kong throws down in a fight in this movie holy shit the whole theater was shaking the sounds were so loud that was honestly my favorite part of the movie we all know when you go to see a King Kong or Godzilla or whatever movie you're going there for the fight scenes you're not going there for the story now Kong Skull Island is the second movie in their kind of monster verse that they're doing which basically they're copying Marvel in other words and I don't mind that at all. I think that is a very very smart move to connect movies together to get more people to watch them to understand the future movies. So I saw Godzilla and it was okay but I definitely think Kong Skull Island was a lot better. This movie does have some comedy in it. Now, when I say that, only about 60% of it really hits you and makes you chuckle or laugh a little bit. The rest is just kind of random one-liners that don't really hit at home and you just kind of sit there and just like... Two standout characters for me in Kong Skull Island was Samuel L. Jackson. He was an arrogant military kind of general and he killed it in this role. He was pretty one-dimensional, but he worked. The second character was John C. Riley. Now he is a crashed pilot and he's basically crazy. He knows the jungle like the back of his hand and he was the comedic relief in this movie. Almost every joke he said really made me laugh. Like it was pretty funny the stuff they made him say in this movie. King Kong in this movie actually has another villain besides the military officers and people shooting at him the whole movie and that villain is skull crawlers now these are these little ugly ass creatures that sneak out through the bottom of the earth since it's all hollow and they basically come up and king kong has to beat the shit out of them that's why the aboriginals of this island pretty much think he's a god or a king now those are all the things I loved about this movie, and now let's get on to the negatives. So the first negative I have with this movie is they kind of shoehorn the actors in it. They had a great, great list of actors to choose from. Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, Samuel L. Jackson, John C. Riley, and many more. They didn't really use them to the fullest potential they could have in my opinion. Tom Hiddleston's character literally gets recruited after beating up two guys. That was all the scientists needed to see to want him to join their expedition. Which I thought was a little weird and cheesy and it was. Now Brie Larson in this movie, she honestly didn't really have a purpose. She was there to be a photographer which means that other people shouldn't be taking pictures but in this movie other people do take pictures so it kind of makes her a little irrelevant. She was also kind of in the movie to be the person that kind of calms down King Kong almost like a monkey human love interest but not really. And the second negative I have with this movie is to do with the characters again and that is that they didn't really have a story. Tom Hiddleston he basically sits down at a table takes some money and he's on He's on the expedition now. Oh, okay. He didn't question a single thing. He just he just goes. Brie Larson, I honestly don't even remember her kind of explanation of why she went on the trip to Skull Island. I'm guessing they wanted a photographer and they picked her. No real reason why at all. And my third and final complaint is there wasn't really a story. It was basically exactly what you think it would be. 
you have a little bit of human stuff and they're attacking King Kong and then there's a bigger villain and King Kong has to fight that villain and that's pretty much the movie. So guys, besides those negatives, I still really enjoyed this movie. I knew going into this, it wasn't going to be some crazy story that I would love and I went in there just wanting to see a giant monkey just beat the shit out of some crazy monsters. That's all I wanted to see and that's what I paid for. And that's what I got. So I'm going to give Kong Skull Island a B minus. Go check this movie out guys. I had a great time watching it. The action scenes were totally worth it. The characters in the movie weren't too good I would say. They didn't really have stories and they weren't that interesting I guess. But King Kong just beating the shit out of some monsters and beating the shit out of military. It was... It was really fun to watch, especially in IMAX and 3D, which you have to see this movie in. Thanks for watching my review, and make sure you guys subscribe to see my Beauty and the Beast review, which will be uploaded next week. And if you guys have seen Kong Skull Island, leave a comment below of what you guys thought about it. And also, who do you think is going to win in the 2020 movie Godzilla vs. King Kong? My bet is King Kong. I just want to know your guys' opinion. So make sure you guys subscribe so I can see you guys next time.